Welcome everybody to Let's Talk ICT, um, Accessible Color Palette. And I wanted to um, start by introducing uh, our presenters today. Um, see if I can get the slide to move. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, my name is Eileen Belton. I'm with Missouri Assistive Technology. Um, that's what I do during the Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm also um, a jewelry artist. I, I bend wire around uh, stones. And uh, so I love working with color. So um, my um, colleague that's joining us also has an appreciation for color. She, uh, first and foremost, she works for the state and she is our web accessibility expert um, out of the ITSD office. Um, but she's also an artist. She works with color pencil and acrylic paint. And um, so we, we're looking forward to doing this session because we both love working with color. Yep. And uh, we can go ahead and stop sharing ourselves and then we'll move on into the presentation. So um, today we're going to talk about color contrast. And is this really such a big deal that we need a session about it? Um, well, we think so. And so does a study that was done by the Global Accessibility Awareness Day group. Um, they did a survey of home pages. And out of six um, common accessibility failures, the number one uh, accessibility failure was low color contrast for text against background. Um, and so that means um, if like over 86% of the home pages they looked at um, failed to pass color contrast minimum standard, then we all struggle with this topic and how to do this. And so that's why we decided to do today's session um, to talk about what the standards or the criteria are, and then some tools how to um, do this job so that we can make sure we're meeting standards. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the WCAG color success criterion. It's 1.4.3 that talks about contrast. And the minimum that's required is level AA, and that's on the left-hand side. Um, the minimum for uh, regular size text, that's text that's 18 point, uh, not bold, or um, bolded text that's less than 14 point. The ratio um, of the color contrast between the text and the background should be 4.5 to 1. Now, the, the color contrast ratio is on a scale of 1 to 21. And um, black and white together is um, the contrast of 21 to 1. So that's the ultimate um, perfect contrast ratio. Um, but the criteria allows us to have minimum criteria standard. And so there's an example here for you of 4.5.1 when using a blue and white. Um, so that's for regular size font. For uh, large text, so that's at least 18 point or 14 point bold, the contrast will be three to one. Now there's some exceptions to this. Uh, one is when there's text in a photo that's purely um, decorative, that has no real in purpose in explaining what the photo is, um, then that does not need to meet any uh, contrast uh, minimum requirement. Um, and then for logos, um, brand names or logos, there is no um, color contrast requirement. Now on the right hand side, I have level AAA. This is really best practice or a higher level of meeting a standard. And if you have your um, regular size text meeting a color contrast with the text in the background at seven to one, um, then that's your best practice. Um, if the large text is 4.5 to one, then that is also best practice. So you can see the difference between um, the two for what's required. And if you ultimately want to do the best you can, um, that's the uh, level double, AAA. So where is color contrast criteria applied? Um, we'll, we'll show you some examples, but essentially anything that is considered ICT or electronic um, accessible things like documents and, and online things. Um, so that would include PDFs um, that are placed online or are sent through email. This is the other way to discern that. Um, and that could include PowerPoints and in a PowerPoint, it's, that's a very colorful venue, but it's also going to have charts in there that's full of information with text against a colored background. So it also includes the PowerPoint charts. 
Um, websites and apps are also um, required to use the color contrast criteria and so is social media. Um, so when you think about um, examples of where color contrast comes into play, it could be, um, for example, if you do social media posting for your agency and you're sharing information um, against a photo background, um, like for example, here on the left-hand side is an example sort of of a post. And so there's, it says 60% off. That's a <clears throat> nice little sales amount to consider. And so that needs to have color contrast to be able to um, provide that information to your audience. Websites also with photos and, and words against it would be another example, but also the text in the background on the actual document where the content, context, um, I'm sorry, it is content, <laughs> the content is used. And then on the far right hand side, I have an image of a save the date card, and that would be um, an example of where you're sharing information about an important date for an important event and whether it's online. Um, and I would also um, say if you're doing best practices, consider this for your print um, materials as well, so that the contrast is sharp enough so that the individual can read the information. So how are colors chosen? Well, um, every organization is going to handle it different, but these are some examples of, of what I'm aware of. One is um, they, they might be using pre-made templates in softwares or online um, tools that they're using. Uh, it could be brand colors that are already determined. Um, it could also be um, a team decision for a group that's working on an event that's coming up. So it could be um, as they're working on a theme, they also might be choosing colors to you know, mimic what that theme is about. Um, it, it could also be if you hire someone um, on a contract basis to do the illustrations for you for a publication is another example where colors might be chosen, you know, or just happens. <laughs> but either one of those places, um, if there's an individual that you can have a conversation about, this is an opportunity to share some information about color contrast and the tools of how to make this um, easy and fun. We're going to, um, Lainey's got that um, coming up in a, a minute here for you, where she's going to introduce some tools that um, you can share with others of how to pick color palettes, you know, like for an event where there's several colors, or if you're looking at brand colors that you can't change, then you can put that in a color palette um, that we're going to show you here in a minute, accessible color palette tool, and then you can pick what um, text and font backgrounds work with that brand color combination. So some things you can change, some things you can, but still in all, we want you to make sure that the colors that are being utilized are accessible. Um, so let's move on into that section. And Lainey, if you would um, share with us the tools that you use um, for color contrast analyzers and, and color um, palette choices. All right. Okay, just give me a second here and I will do my share. Right. Okay, so as Eileen mentioned, we're going to be showing you a few. Um, different tools, depending upon, you know, what your situation is, um, to build out accessible color palettes. Um, so one of them I'm going to be showing here is called the Accessible Color Palette Builder. And the resources, um, there's a resources slide at the end where you'll be seeing and having links to this information, everything that I'm going to be showing you here. So, for example, this one, and I'm going to show some different scenarios like Eileen mentioned, you know, where you'd be pulling colors from or what situations you're trying to build out, you know, color palettes and things like that. So, in the case of this, you have um, colors that, you know, you already have kind of established and you want to take a look at um, 
you know, how, how, how can I make those accessible? And also, oh, one of the things that I kind of wanted to start off with was, you know, we're, we're talking about color and color palettes. What are some situations where I would be checking for accessible color? So I'm going to show a few different examples, but, you know, website colors, um, graphic colors where you can, um, you know, check your um, accessibility of colors within, you know, slider graphics, different things like that, as well as, you know, Word documents, different things like that. So, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show, I'll go ahead and show the accessible color palette builder, and then I'll get into some, some different scenarios here. So, for example, this tool, I based these particular colors off of this particular image, you know, just a, a kind of a generic image that I wanted to uh, give you some examples um, and kind of test out colors and things. So you'll notice here, I had already kind of pre-filled in these colors into this. And again, this is just a, um, a website that you can go to, free, free to access. All the tools we'll be showing today are all free. So, and how I did this was that I picked the, what we call the hex codes. And I pulled those by using the color dropper in another tool I'll be showing you momentarily called the color contrast analyzer. And I pasted it into the tool and you can actually just like sit here and, and um, name them. And kind of the ni nice feature of this is that I can hit save changes and it kind of creates a unique URL that you can share with somebody else. Maybe someone who needs to approve it, maybe somebody, just your project team to get approval for, you know, th this is the color palette we want to use. And I can go in and save it and it creates this unique URL up at the top that you can share. Now I'm going down and I'm like, okay, so what does this tool do for me when it comes to accessible color? It shows accessible color combinations and ones to avoid. So you'll notice down here that you, you get these areas where it's X'd out. And that is just telling you that we have these color combinations going down the side here. And it's showing you, you know, which ones are passing, in this case, the 4.5 to 1 ratio that Eileen mentioned. So you go, and then you go down and you're seeing here that a safe color to use with this is black. So, you know, for example, white isn't going to work. Um, and this is kind of where you can also play around. Now, in this case, it lets you play around with up to six colors at a time. So, for example, um, if I wanted to, and you'll notice here, that's how the kind of the color dropper works. I'll show more of that later. Okay, hold on a minute. I didn't, I grabbed right. So I'm going in and changing it. I'm just changing it to a gray. And you'll notice as I go down that it's indicating that this particular gray foreground and background, it doesn't pass at all in any one of these scenarios. So, so in other words, this particular graphic wouldn't pass the accessibility check. This color is just simply too light for this color combination. So this is kind of where you can dabble around and play with colors. And 
I'm just going to play around. I'm going to grab a different darker gray. And I'm going to go back to our color palette. I'm going to hit edit. And this is a darker gray. I'm going to save it. And then we're going to go back and see, well, it's still not passing any, any particular. So again, this is still not dark enough to be over, overlaid on any of these colors. And so it, you kind of see, get, get the idea that I can continue to go down the line and darken this color and see where it's going to give me a passing color. We'll do one more. And again, it's not passing. So probably in this scenario, and I'm going to go back. In a scenario like this, if you're going to use these particular, your best bet is probably to go, and, and that's actually black, but um, you're probably going to, your best bet is to go very, very dark gray or black in this case that's going to be a suitable color combination. So in other words, to update this image, you would change your text to a black or an extremely dark gray, for example. Um, that would, would help that pass. OK, another situation. And I was going to go and showing this. And here, here's that same tool. But in this scenario, instead of a graphic, I grabbed, hold on just a minute. I grabbed the colors from this website. So you, you'll notice here that the graphic has a specific color theme. So here's where it's helpful to say, OK, I have these color combinations in the graphic. If I were to implement this color theme across a website and maybe incorporate it in text headers and things like that, what are my safe colors to combine it with to pass accessibility? So I went in and I took these four colors here and I placed it into this palette builder. And I also included a white and a black. And then that way you can see how these four colors interact with white and black. So we'll go down and we'll see here that in this case, the orange, this orange color and this green color pass good with black. And then when we talk about like a white or a lighter text, for example, these two blues and a good accessible color to overlay, for example, with text would be white. Now you can still play around with variations of like, like what I was doing earlier, where you could play around with a very dark gray or a very, you know, pale light gray and see if it was if it'll still pass that test if you want to play around with variations other than just a white or a black but in this case you, you know you get a clear understanding hey if i'm going to do any overlay on this color i'm going to use black if i'm going to use these two i'm going to use white so there's there's a nice example of of how of how this particular tool works Okay, and another tool, and if you can just give me a second, I had, I had it open in a tab and now it seems to have disappeared. So I'm going to pull it up. Um, let's see here. While you're finding the next one, I, you know, what I liked about the color palette tool when I um, used it is not only can you rest assured that the colors are showing you were good, you can hover over it and see the ratio to confirm it that way as well. 
let's see, hold on. I was just gonna pull it up from my history. I think I accidentally closed it. Just give me one second here. My apologies. There we go. Go back here. And we have this. Okay, that's the same one. Hold on just a second. And I know, um, Eileen, do you have that other, the other website? If you could drop it in the chat, I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go sure. ahead and jump, I'm gonna go and jump over to the color contrast analyzer and then I'll jump back. Okay. Because the other, the other tool I was gonna show kind of, kind of serves a different purpose, but I'm, so probably segueing over to the color contrast analyzer would be a good thing at this point anyway. So. And so the color contrast analyzer is a desktop tool and it, it, it is a super, I, I find it very super helpful because number one, um, it, isn't, it isn't reliant on a browser to do your testing. And, and of course, there's some great tools that are browser based like, you know, the WebAIM, the WebAIM Wave tool also has a contrast analyzer in it. That's great. But the beauty of this tool is that you can check Word documents. You can, you can test things that are on your desktop in some form. Like maybe you want to test out colors in a Photoshop graphic or a Word document or different things like that. So that's, I, I, this is kind of my go-to tool. I, I really like this one a lot. So for example, um, you know, it, it just gives me kind of that power to, um, you know, quickly test contrast levels and things like that. So to jump back to an example here, let me put this over. Okay. So foreground color, background color. You'll notice here this tool. Um, kind of shows you this information and that format. And the beauty of it is, is that using that color dropper, which is really handy. So for example, I can do that and then, and actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch this. And actually it really doesn't matter, foreground, background, you can always switch it. So I'm gonna go ahead and this is kind of a neat little, a neat little feature there that you can just switch uh, switch it really quickly. So the feedback that it gives you is down here. So, you know, she was talking about the double A and the triple A. And unfortunately, it's not, it's not passing at either the large text, which is the um, 14 point bold or larger or 18 point non bold. That's kind of the threshold for large text versus regular text like how we were talking, this would classify as a large text. So it needs to, it needs to pass in this area. So one of the nice features of this tool is you can play around with, okay, what color do I actually need? And you'll notice as I adjust this lightness setting here, my contrast ratio changes here and For example, I need that 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 threshold is three three to one for large text. So I'm just hitting it right here. It's passing. You'll notice that this jumped to a, a pass message. If I went back this way, suddenly it, it would go to a fail. So you kind of know where your threshold is. And then if you wanted to update this image, you could go in and um, use this color instead here. Um, another wonderful feature of this is depending upon what source tool you're using, maybe you're a Photoshop user for graphics, maybe you need, there could be some scenarios where you need an RGB color combination instead. So you have that information available to you as well. Um, 
So you can get that, that color information in whatever format that you're needing it. Do you need the RGB color? Do you need the web hex code? What do you need to, to get, get the job done? So this is really nice to be able to not only test, but to figure out what color combinations will work for you. So as I mentioned, the color contrast analyzer is a desktop tool. So I can play around. Like for example, I've got, you may have Word documents that incorporate graphics, charts, different things. Now, in this particular example, I actually don't have the text overlaying the images in the pie chart. But if I did, if, for example, let's say this information was actually overlaid in, in your pie chart, this is kind of where that testing would come into play. So, you know, kind of imagining that these colors, and we'll say that this color is like a black text, you know, um, you know, how do, how do we test to make sure that this is an accessible chart? So we're gonna jump back to the color contrast analyzer and I'm gonna play around again with the eyedropper and I'm gonna change I'm, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and change. I know what the hex code is for black. It is zero, six zeros. And this is passing with flying colors. So if I overlay black on this, is it going to pass? It'll pass if it, the text was very large, but if it was using regular text, it would not. So imagine if this text was over this, it would be very hard to read. So in, in this scenario, you know, what might work? Well, would, if I change this text, if it was laying over this to white, would that pass accessibility for regular text? Yes, it would. So this is a great tool for, you know, kind of making sure that your, um, you know, graphics that include text overlays and things like that are accessible. I, I love it for things like that. Um, you may think of another example. A, a lot of places use regional maps and they may overlay county names or region names. You wanna make sure that those, those contrast levels are appropriate and accessible for people that interact with that map and, and take a look at that. So another good example, you wanna test out colors that are, you know, already on a website. And Lainey, um, if you check the direct chat to you, I think the link is there. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. So, so going back again, you can, you can use this on a website as well. So I was going to give an example here. This is a, this is classified as large text. And my foreground color is white, and we already have that plugged in. So I'm going to do my dropper here and check to see, is this passing all right? And this is a large text, and we are good to go. This is a 3.8 to 1 ratio. All is good there. And again, if I wanted, um, had it not passed, in this tool, I could have adjusted this lightness lever right here and maybe got some suggested colors to me that would pass. So it's, it's a really nice tool. Definitely recommend that tool. Okay, so jumping back, thank you so much. Um, okay. This one is really nice. So this is called the Accessible Color Palette Generator. And it works kind of similar to that first one I showed you, um, but probably more of the mindset of this one is if, is if you're not really needing to test a predefined palette, but maybe you're trying to generate some ideas for a color palette. 
you're kind of at those beginning stages. So for example, let's say that, go back to here. Let's say that we have a project coming up and we know that we wanna use this kind of greenish color here, but we don't know what other color combinations. So it's kind of a great idea generator. So for example, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, put in one color and then we're gonna go down and we're gonna see what it's doing here. So it's generating some palettes for us. This it's, and it'll kind of name each one of them, vibrant, monochromatic, meaning, you know, it's basing the entire palette off of shades and tints of one particular color, um, kind of contrasting, complementary, um, and it just gives you a lot of great ideas here. More of a pastel, different, di di ni nice different color combinations here. Re a really neat tool, but but I say this all to say, at the same time, it's giving you feedback information on, on contrast and passing contrast levels. So for example, here, we're looking at this one. And if we chose to use this palette and a logo or you know a brochure combination or a website palette, we would wanna overlay black as our text if we were to be using this. Now, you know, you may very well be able to use maybe even like a dark gray combination on a lot of these, but it kind of, it gives you some nice quick feedback that, you know, this color is going to need a light or white shade. And these colors are going to need dark. So in other words, I mean, I guess the point is, is that if, if your organization has created a color palette, it doesn't mean you need to you know, start over with an established color palette. You just need to be thinking about what combinations you're going to be using those colors with. And this will give you some great feedback on how to effectively use your color palettes. No, more examples. Okay, another, another thing that it can do is let's say you have no colors in mind and it also just randomly generates palettes. We've got some, got some brightness going on here. Um, and again, creating different color combinations. And so in this case, the base color is this kind of lime greenish color and it's generating different combinations for you know different ideas, different effects. And you can continue to hit random and it'll just continue to create different ones. Um, another nice thing that you could do is, let's say you see kind of a neat color like this seven, eight, six, four, nine, five. You're like, oh, I'd like to see some, I'd like to see some color combinations that are based off this color. I like that, that's really neat. You can hit generate. And then if you go down, it, it's kind of going back and it's generating a series of color palettes based off. You'll see this color being reused in all of them. So an excellent color idea generator. And again, it's giving us that feedback about color contrast. These colors need a dark text. These colors need a light text and so on and so forth. So it's really, really a nice tool. So these are, um, you know, kind of an arsenal of, color palette tools, all free, that can help you, um, you know, figure out accessibility combinations for existing color palettes that you're already using, or you need to generate some new ones. 
And then again, the color co contrast analyzer is a great go-to to test colors no matter where you're, you're using color. You know, a desktop document, a Photoshop Canva document, um, you know, um, you know, maybe someone has a, a color palette that they sent you via PDF and you want to check some of the color combinations and you can kind of do that there. But this is a really, a, a really nice tool for that. So, and hey, Eileen, have we had any questions or anything pop up yet? on anything i i'm not seeing anything um okay okay yeah. um yeah. if you want to go ahead and jump back to the resource page sure be happy to yeah and one of the things about color contrast if you're using you know an automatic testing tool like or an accessibility checker in Word or PowerPoint, or with a PDF, maybe you're using um, that pack tool that David Kingsbury talked about last week. Um, oh, yeah. It's still not going to tell you what's wrong. You still have to do the manual work. And so these, these different tools will assist you with getting that done. Um, Lainey, are you able to unshare your screen? Yes, I can. And I'm going to just really quickly, sure. I will go ahead and show just a, another tool, many of you are probably aware of Webbing Wave, and it will give you, it will give you contrast information in this last tab. And again, free uh, browser plugin, and it gives you, it, it will tell you where any issues are located in the page. And just like the, um, tool, the first tool I showed, you can use this lightness lever to find a, a color combination that does pass. So let me hop in here. Yeah, that's a great tool because right there you can play with uh, you know the hue and the saturation and brightness to get that color and grab it. Exactly. Let me go ahead and do that. Thanks. And these are our resources. <laughs> we'll send you the PDF uh, file. I mean, not the PDF, sorry, the PowerPoint file with the um, resource links here so that you can access them. Is there any questions? We've just given you a lot of information to think about, 